Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is slope stability, which is a big part of mass wasting. You know, land, whether landslides are coming down the hill, how do we know whether a slope is going to stay solid or whether it's going to slide down the hill and you get a landslide or an avalanche or, or your house slides down the hill and breaks into pieces? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff why landslides are important, okay, and slope stability. So what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of think about with real materials what the slope of something can be to where it's stable or unstable and then we're going to compare it to say a mapped area. First we're going to gather some data using experimental studies. Second we're going to compare it to an area to see if we can predict whether slopes will be stable or not. What are the concepts in this? Concept first is what is called angle of repose. Okay, The angle of repose is the maximum angle that a material can take on before it fails. Okay, so if you dump a pile of stuff onto the table, what angle would that hill be at maximum before it slops down the hill again? Okay, and that will be specific to a material. Okay, so each material, and it typically isn't uh, the chemistry of a material, it mostly is things like roughness, or angularity or things like that, that's what really determines how steep a pile can get before it fails. And what you will notice then is, is that angle that it hits, which is called the angle of repose, it's the maximum angle that you can go before failure, that if you want to grow your pile bigger, you know, so and start out with a small pile, get it bigger, it'll stay the same angle. So the angle is conserved no matter how big the pile gets. So that means you want to make a pile higher, you got to let it get wider so it maintains that angle. Okay, and so that is angle of repose. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a couple of different types of material and you are going to determine the angle of repose. Okay, and so that's what we'll do in the first part of the lab and we'll do that first then talk about how we're going to compare it. Alright, so I have a sample that you're given. And this is a sample of some type of material. In this case, it's sand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump half of it out onto the tray very gently. You don't want to do it too fast because if you slop it down too hard, it's not going to work. Okay, so what we do then is I will come down here and I've got a protractor. Okay, and this uh, is how you measure angles. You take the bottom of the protractor, you sight it right in along the um, the edge of your pile, okay, and then extend that line of the pile up until you get it in some angle, okay, so you can see an angle on the outside of this protractor and it tells me how many degrees I'm looking at, and so in this case I'm someplace in the order of about 33 degrees maybe, okay, you can get it right down to the degree. And that's how we, we'll start doing it. What, since this is science and you always want reproducibility, we want to be able to have two measurements that do the, set to kind of do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little more of the material and I'm going to dump it out onto my pile and I'm going to measure it again. So just in case I dumped it a little too fast or you know something like that and the angle wasn't up to the maximum angle that first time, I give it a second try to make sure that I did it right. So I sight it along and yeah, it's about 32 degrees is the angle that I can see in along here. Okay, so it was about, we were right in the first place. That's the angle of repose of dry sand. And in any of the other samples you're going to get, that will be your dry angle of repose. Now, there are other things that affect angle of repose. Not just the material itself, this roughness, also physical characteristics or conditions will affect it. So, for example, if it's wet is one of the things, and that's what we're going to test, but there are other things as well. Certainly, imagine if you lived in an area where there was earthquakes, okay, and it did this a lot. Look what happens to my angle of repose. So under shake, conditions of shaking, obviously you're going to get a much lower angle of repose than if it's not shaking. If you plant vegetation on the sides of your hill, it'll, the roots will hold this hill slope together. Even temperature can do it. Freezing, if there's water in it, you freeze it, the ice will hold it in place, okay, as opposed to letting it fall down the hill. And so therefore there are other factors that also 
govern that angle of repose and tell you whether a slope is going to be stable or not. Next thing you do is you pour some water into your sample, just enough to moisten it. Okay, so this is a case where we just have moistened sample. Okay, the next thing we're going to do then is pour it out and see what the angle of repose does. Okay. In this case, we'll pour it out and get some pretty good angle of repose on this uh, using moist sand. Okay, sand is pretty high, as you can see, and we measure it the same way, and it comes up 90 degrees. Okay, so sand can come pretty much vertical. Dump it back in. Mix it up again and do it again to make sure it will, that was a good measure. And again, you can see that the angle of repose now on the sand has increased to 90 degrees. So moist sand can get very steep angles of repose. The reason for this is capillary action. The water holds the sand grains together, and that's why it gets so high. So in this case, we can get almost vertical angles of repose with moist sand. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add more water to it. Okay, so now, not just getting it moist, let's get it downright wet. I know all you guys like to play with mud pies when you're kids. So let's get the whole thing soaked. Let's get it completely saturated with water. And then we're going to take the same material and dump it. And now, you can see that the angle of repose has dropped back down again. When we get it really soaked, it's down now to about 45 degrees, a little bit messy on the sides, and obviously because of the water it will take on, so you just have to kind of rough estimate it in. So very soaking wet mud uh, takes on a much lower angle. We do the same thing in here. We'll do it twice. Uh, sometimes in this one I think I have to add a little water back in because it's... So, too much of the water came out in that first dump. So the next thing we can do is soak it pretty good. Now again, and the angle's even going down lower. So again, we have the angle of repose in here. Looks like it is in the order of about 20 degrees or less. So you can see how the sand, when it has a little bit of moisture in it, gets very steep. When it has a lot of moisture in it, it gets flat. Okay, so you get three different levels depending on how much water is in it. Now, what are we going to do in this lab? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we can turn to the second page of the lab handout, and it has charts to fill out. Okay, and the top thing is you want to describe the sample. Okay, so we want to see what that sample was. And there's a bunch of things that it's asking you for, color, and grain size, what sizes are the grains, are they clay, are they coarse, what's the size on it, uh, sorting, in other words, are they all the same size, are they different sizes, uh, angularity, are the grains angular or are they rounded, okay, and all of the features that you're going to describe are described in detail on the first page, so you get all that information on here and you just match from what you're looking at. You fill that in and then we're going to add in the angles that we measured in our experimental tests. Well, you start out with the material, and you start it out as dry. What was the angle we got when we measured it dry? Second test, hopefully we, we got the same angle or something close. You take that maximum angle. That's what you would use on, the, on this part. Next, you go in with the partially wet one, what we did. Ours was close to vertical. Uh, in this case, we would write in those two numbers in here, and that's the partially wet one, the moist one. Next one, we go in the saturated. We had a lot of water. What was the angle of repose on those two? Put those numbers in here, and we do them for all of the different materials that we're going to be testing, all three. Okay, and that's the first part of the lab. The second part of the lab is to compare this to some real-life problem. Okay, and the real-life problem that we have in this case is we have a topographic map on the end on an area where we might be building a subdivision. Okay, so these were houses going, and you can see there's a bunch of X's on boxes where you have houses. Okay, and on these is also some topography shown on here, and I've divided into four areas, easily seen by breaks in the topography. Um, we have a flat area in the middle, we have a very steep area in area number two, a relatively steep area in number three, a gentle area in number four. Okay, and so all these are separate. 
And what we're going to do with this is we're going to determine what the slope is. And now I have in here a cookbook on how to determine the slope of an area using a simple formula. Otherwise, you can go back to your topographic maps lab and see in there it tells you how to do the um, slope angle of a, uh, an area. So on here we have a triangle. It shows how to construct the triangle, same way you did it. We have a distance along where you would measure a distance off of this map. Scale is down at the bottom. And we have a height difference on the end. The height is basically the drop in elevation across the length that you're going to measure. And with that, then we can calculate the slope for each one of these four areas. Okay, relatively gentle, a steep, intermediate, shallow. Okay, and each one of those is going to come up with a number using that tangent formula that you can see here in your, in your handout or in the previous labs. Next thing we're going to do then is we're going to compare our experimental data with this or calculations that we did from the map. Okay, so by looking at the calculations, we'll compare the two. So what we're going to start out with is if we had dry material. Now, if we had dry material for sample number one, and we would look and we'd say if the slope angle is less than the angle of repose, then it's stable. If the slope angle is greater than the angle of repose, then it's not stable. That means it's going to fall apart to try to achieve the angle of repose. And so therefore, that's what we're going to be watching as this happens, is to look and see whether those angles are the same or less. So for each material, we're going to go through and say, was it stable in, in this, for this slope number two or slope number three when it's dry or not? And that's what you're going to go through. And there's a whole chart in here to fill out to tell me one way or the other for each one. Then we're going to look at it under moist conditions. Okay, and under moist conditions, is this going to be great? Is this is the slope angle steeper than the angle of repose? It's so, it's going to fall apart. If the slope angle is less than the angle of repose, then it will be stable. Okay, and so that's the second thing we do. Finally, we look at it under soap conditions and see if that, if the, uh, each, which would be stable and which wouldn't be stable. Same way. If it exceeds the angle of repose, it falls apart. That's the basics. Then what we're going to do is we have a couple of questions to ask you under specific instances. Would this fall apart? Uh, what kind, so we're going to kind of consider other things and ways to, to remediate the situation if we do have an unstable slope situation. What things can we do to prevent these slopes from failing under certain conditions? And so therefore you're going to be able to tell the builder, what do I have to do? Which slopes are stable? Which are unstable? What should I do? to make those slopes stable. And so you, this is actually an applied problem.